Today, I want to discuss the crucial role of foreign investment in driving economic growth, especially focusing on foreign direct investment or FDI. Now, to kick things off, let's talk about why capital is so important. Now, every country needs capital to fuel its economic growth, but here's the thing. Most countries can't generate all the capital, capital they need on their own. Now, that's where foreign investors come into the picture, helping to bridge this gap. This is where FDI and foreign portfolio investment or FPI play their roles. Now, let's break down foreign direct investment. Picture this, a company from one country sets up or invests in a business in another country. Now, the key here is long-term interest. These companies aren't just looking for a quick profit, they aim to build something lasting. This often means setting up factories, creating jobs, and deeply integrating into the economy. On the flip side, we have foreign portfolio investment or FPI. This is more about financial assets like stocks and bonds. Think of FPI as a more hands-off approach. Investors are buying into the financial markets of another country rather than into the businesses themselves. It's similar to investing in shares without getting involved in the company's day-to-day -day operations. Now, countries usually prefer FDI because it's much more stable. FDI doesn't just bring in money, it brings in new technology, jobs and skills. Its impact on the local economy is more substantial and positive compared to FDI. Now, let's shift our focus to recent trends in India. According to the UN CTAD report, FDI inflows to India fell by 43% in 2023, dropping to $28 billion. Now, this change has seen India slip from the 8th to the 15th position globally in terms of FDI inflows over just one year. Now, the decline in FDI isn't just something we are seeing in India. It's a part of a larger global trend. Globally, FDI also fell by 2% down to $1.3 trillion. Economic slowdown, geopolitical tensions, and policy uncertainties are affecting FDI worldwide. Now, despite these challenges, India still ranks in the top five globally for greenfield projects and international project finance deals. Now, this does remain a positive indicator of our investment potential. Now, even though the global environment is challenging and India isn't immune to these factors, the dip in the FDI shouldn't be seen as a sign of declining prospects. In fact, companies such as Apple, Foxconn are ramping up their investments in India, showing strong confidence in our country's potential. Consider this, with a GDP of $3.5 trillion, a population of 1.4 billion, and a large available workforce, our fundamentals are strong. We are also actively working to improve the investment climate through several strategic initiatives. Moreover, our efforts to strengthen trade relations seen in recent deals with Australia and UAE and upcoming agreements with the UK and the EU are all part of a broader strategy to create a more welcoming environment for international investors. However, we must also acknowledge that while India's economy appears robust on the surface with our GDP growing 8.2% in fiscal year 24, our private consumption growth has remained Noted. Now, this signals a need for a greater focus on revitalizing our domestic demand. Now, if this happens, this will further boost our private capital expenditure, our employment, our export competitiveness, and overall productivity, which is essential for sustaining long-term economic growth. Now, India's positioning as an alternative to China is significant in attracting FDI, but we are not alone in this space. Countries like Vietnam and Indonesia are also vying for this role. To solidify our position, we need to make substantial efforts to improve our economic fundamentals and investment appeal. Having said that, this is me, Merlin, signing off. Take care and stay invested. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.